this you, you're a very popular what I would call conservative thinker yeah but you're very young I am. like how did this all happen how did you become this Fox News personality conservative thinker yeah, I mean, I just like launched a YouTube channel and oh, fucking YouTube. Yeah, YouTube where where magic happens. <laughs> YouTube's a strange place. It's, it's a strange thing. as it's just it another gets. strange place. Yeah. Well, it's the internet. And the it's internet. The internet. Is strange <laughs> yeah. As it gets. Strange things happen on the internet, but yeah, I just kind of I was really passionate. Um, I understood. I had studied for like it sounds strange, but like I spent a year underground, like studying politics. Once I had my red pill moment, if that's what you want to call well, explain it. Explain that because you used to be a liberal, right? And then you became a conservative. That's correct. So what was it? So the story like really starts with like high school, I guess. Like there, you know how things can happen to you in life, and they don't make sense when they happen. You're mm -hmm. like, why God me? And then like you get a little older, and you're like, this makes perfect sense. Right. So I was the quote unquote victim of a hate crime when I was in high school. When you say quote unquote victim, you don't I hate think the word victim. victim. No, I hate the word victim. And it's I'm like and again, early I can see why early on I've sort of developed this mentality that like being a there's no value in being a victim and people rush to call people a victim. They rush to call somebody okay. the aggressor. So how do you describe it that you experienced a hate I crime? I experienced something that was labeled a hate crime. I, w I wouldn't even call it a hate crime. I think we live in a label obsessed culture and before we seek to understand what happened, we seek to like Put it in a box. Yeah. Like, so what, what everyone, happened? Someone has to be a demon and someone has to be an angel. Right. So what happened was I received some voicemail messages from about four kids. And that like, you know, the language was, it was pretty strong. It was like, we're going to tar and feather your family. Um, we're going to put a bull in the back of your head like we did to Martin Luther King. Like, you know, N-word, N-word, N-word. Um, and you received these on your phone? On my cell phone, yeah. How'd they get your phone number? Ex well, there was a prank phone call, so I didn't know. I was like four male voices, and I was like in high school at the time, and I was like, okay, like, I cannot think of four human beings that want me dead that would say, like, right. we're going to put a bullet in the back of your head like we did to Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks like naming Where'd you off. go to school? Where were you? What part of the country? Stanford High School in Connecticut. Okay, that's yeah. a shithole. Yeah, yeah, it's a total shithole. I hate Connecticut. Yeah, no, I, the Connecticut's <laughs> on a shithole. It's a running joke, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> right. I always shit on Connecticut. I have my buddy Tommy Jr. He lives in Connecticut and I'm always telling him, dude, you gotta move out of Connecticut and it became this terrible running joke where I talk about that Connecticut's the worst state okay. in the country. <laughs> yeah, have you actually not, been? Yeah, a bunch of times. Yeah. I used to work there all the time. Where? What city? Well, I used to work in all over Connecticut when I was doing stand-up. I would drive from Boston into Connecticut. Yeah. I did like a lot of gigs in Hartford. I did gigs Hartford in, is a shithole. Yeah, it's a shithole. Bridgeport yeah. is a shithole. Shout out to Marlon Starling Jr. though. Yeah. <laughs> um, he was a boxer that came out of uh, Hartford. Yeah. Big time boxer. Marlon, uh, Marlon Starling. Um, but when you were in high school. Right. Somebody started doing this prank call and shit on you, and was this? It was a, all in one night. It was all in one yeah, night. Yeah, it was like four voicemails. Was this tied to like a boyfriend? No, or so I, a girl it's, I was, was at a boyfriend's house when I got the calls, and I just like put it aside because it was like blocked number. So I was like, right. I didn't think anything of it. And then like when I listened to it, like it was like some pretty horrific stuff. Like I definitely cried. You know, I was seventeen years old. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next day at school, I took this like philosophy class, and like I don't know what the topic was. I don't know what prompted me to raise my hand and like introduce what had happened last night as like you know a segue maybe i just need to get off my chest but like the teacher like spazzed out and was like get up we're going to the principal's office like you know you have to report this he brings me into the office the principal like freaked out like she just like the language was like you know it, it was shocking you know um and then she called like the resource officer and then like I, the next period of my life was like a blackout because it turned out that three of the kids i had never even met like they, this was like maybe some kids that had their first beer. One of the kids I was like friends with, but we were arguing because he was upset that I was like spending so much time with my boyfriend. Oh, but I didn't. That's but he, what it but was. he's gay. Like he, it wasn't like he just was like jealous. Like you know, like just like I used to hang out with him every day. Started hanging out with my boyfriend. It was like a stupid thing. Maybe he wasn't one hundred percent gay. Yeah, no, I, he's one hundred percent gay, <laughs> um, from what I'm told. But. Um, yeah, so uh so then, he just got petty yeah. and jealous. And, and then so it was like here are my it. three friends and they we're all gonna get drunk and call these oh, call this black girl and you know, it's easy to say awful things into like this. Like if you don't have to look at a human yeah, being, right. like it's easy to say awful things, but unfortunately for me, one of the people in the car happened to be the current governor of Connecticut's son. Oh. So this turned from like some kids prank called to like said some awful things to like front page of the newspaper. Mm. Throughout the entire state of Connecticut, a little bit in New York, 
NAACP outside of my school. Ooh. I have to. It was like this situation that was talk about outrage culture. My first like introduction to outrage culture and the things that sort of formed my thoughts. Like this was a very formative experience in my life. Um, which to me it was it was non political, but it was like my life wasn't mine. Like it, I went right. from like sitting down watching I was watching Talladega Nights with my boyfriend to being the most discussed person in the state of Connecticut. And what was interesting about it was just that because it was the governor of Connecticut's son that was in this car, they had to get the FBI involved to determine the authenticity of the like like maybe she called herself oh, right. They God. he instead of just saying like yes it was my son, he actually let the FBI investigate for six weeks and waited for his son to get arrested six weeks later. You know what I mean? Oh, like did his son deny it? Yeah, they just want to see if they could get away with it. Because this is politics. You know right. what I mean? Like can we get away with it? Is right. it plausible for us to right. get away with it? You know. So six weeks of the entire state, I didn't. I like left school. People were like fighting on my behalf, fighting. You left like, school you like i'm gonna take a break yeah wow yeah it was it was just senior like senior year yeah yeah damn this was just like it was like a monstrosity of a situation and it was one of those things where like literally like letters to the editor it'd be like moms like talk about you know outrage culture right, right. like i don't believe candace like this happened this girl i, I believe she called herself like oh. like i'm oh, just looking for attention one night and i just decided to say i was going to hang my family from a tree isn't it funny that someone <laughs> would even have an opinion on that it's it's bizarre like, i don't um, believe her who even writes like, letters why? to the editor right. like I, the whole thing is weird retrospectively right like yeah. i don't believe her but that is what like life is about right like that same lady Probably to... about to write a YouTube comment right now. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe I you. Still, still. don't believe. Her. <laughs> yeah. This is how you got on fucking Fox yeah, News. Exactly. Yeah. So it was the situation that like was just completely out of my control. And then as quick as it happened, these kids got arrested. And then as quick as it happened, it was over um, for like everyone, but not for me or these kids, right? right? Like, so I never wanted these kids to get arrested. Like, if no one, like this whole situation was taken out of my hands people thought i didn't go to the police like my teacher went to the police it turned into the zoo these kids were labeled publicly racists right the youngest kid in the car was 14. i'm not comfortable with ever labeling a 14 year old racist right or any of these kids racist these are kids and in my opinion adults that failed to act like adults and uh, adults that failed to take a step back and say okay why would what would prompt these kids to do this why is it so easy to be mean Right. Why is it so easy nowadays for children to be mean? And no one to me, like when I really thought about that, I, I went through like five years of like anorexia after, because of the situation. Because of that one. Call, yeah. Those. F four and I was calls. the victim. Yeah. And wow. yeah. You went through anorexia. Yeah. Which is so weird now because like people that know me now are like, there's no way you never didn't eat. But I did. I did like did not eat for like five years. I had issues with anorexia because I mean, anorexia is a disease that genuinely is about control. Right. It's about a certain control of your life. And I felt that I had my, like, my life was fine. And then, like, people took the narrative um, and I decided to determine what the narrative was. You're, an, you're, you're a victim or maybe you're a liar. You know, you're, these kids are racist. These kids are this. And just nobody really thought that, like, you actually ruined all of our lives, right? Like, for a little bit. Like, these kids went on to have, like, DUIs and get arrested and got into drugs. And it, it was because of this of the outrage. Because the pressure of everything that happened. Yeah. And I was, like, would have been totally cool with an apology like you know what i yeah. mean like sorry well good for you for looking at it that way yeah. and as that's hard to do because everybody loves when they are allowed to get outraged everybody loves to get outraged obviously what they did to you was horrible right. but i think a lot of kids especially if they're drinking they don't even understand how stupid and gross it is what they're doing they just know they can do it yeah. and they get a thrill out of it and then there's that mob mentality when there's like a bunch of people together doing the same yeah, thing exactly and you ramp it up and start saying crazy it's shit. really understandable when you just like think about it as a human being and not as somebody who has to have opinion like you're like hey we're gonna call this black girl right you've got a bunch of kids we're gonna just say mean things to her on the phone and you don't have to look her in the face Right? right it's like if i hold up this pen and i'm like just say mean stuff like someone's gonna get you can say right. anything to this right. pen so it's it's sort of um it, it was a formative experience that um in retrospect i understand has so much to do with why i am who i am because i mm -hmm. i hated that like that label of obsessed culture and the outrage machine and then like oh okay we're done but like you know forget the people that whose lives we just like 
Now, do you know those people anymore? Do I don't. I, I I know like the siblings of them because mm-hmm. I was friends. Like that's the thing. Like one of the people that was involved, I was very good friends with his brother. And it's like you're just gonna tell me this kid's like a racist. Like I actually knew the kid's mother. You know, like and nobody cared. It was just so you the, think a hot that story. they weren't necessarily racist, just but stupid. they were just stupid, stupid. and mean stupid. and Did being shitty stupid. kids. And they knew that that was a way that they could scare you. Right. That they and could freak just you out. yeah. And they might have been drunk. You. you know, like drunk. Maybe it was their first beer. Right. But people. I Doubt it. Can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the youngest was fourteen. Oh wow! The youngest, and this person was labeled a racist. Like that's to me is like that's harsh. Right. Um, and people say, "Oh, you're well, too what, forgiving." Well, how but do you not label them a racist? Because what they said was most certainly racist. Yes, the words are racist, right? Can somebody? Right. I guess the question is, can somebody say something, say a word that is racist, and not be a racist human being? Yes, I, I think. Now I'm going to tell you why. Yes, okay. Okay. 